Howdy folks, today we are going to be using Mongo Atlas along with Heroku to deploy a website that uses Mongoose uh, to connect to a Mongo database. Mongo Atlas is a very popular MongoDB database that the MongoDB company provides for free. Um, there, there's some limitations, but it's very kind of them to provide that to us and we can make good use of that to test our applications. Let's get started. So, first thing we want to check our connection to Mongoose. This is an important piece. Make sure that you have a process env that you can connect with your MongoDB URI to. This is the local one with the test DB. Atlas, similar to how it worked when we used a SQL connection, Mongo Atlas will generate a URI for us that we can use. Uh, the rest of this is pretty simple. I've got a couple APIs, some models, um, I've got a very simple web page that just stores some names and retrieves them. I'm going to look at my server. I've got my port. Good. That's important for Heroku. And I've just got my very simple setup here. So, first thing we want to do is we actually want to go to MongoDB Atlas. So, you have your sign up. I'm going to scroll down here. I already have an account. Um, you can sign up with Google as well. I'm going to go to sign in. Again, I've, I already have an account and I'm going to sign in with Google. Okay. So if you get to the, if you already have an organization set up, that's totally okay. Um, if you don't have an organization, you have to create one first. So I'm going to create an organization. It's I'm going to call this org. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I want the MongoDB Atlas rather than Cloud Manager. I'm going to go next. Okay. I'm not going to add any members because I don't have anyone else on my project. If you are working on a project, this might be where you would invite people to be able to manage stuff. You probably don't need that, but it might be useful. So I'm going to leave this on. Create organization. Now you get to this page. If you already had an organization, you just come straight to this page. Totally fine. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this test database. It has to be unique within the organization. You can call it whatever your project is. Um, again, if you'd added members to your org, you can now add them to the project. I don't have any, so I'm going to leave that blank. Great project. Now kind of the, the admin stuff is out of the way. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to create a deployment. And if you already have one set up, then you can also just go up to deployment database to create a new one. But I'll click here. Now there's a couple options they have. The M10 is for production databases at large orgs. You can see it's cost you eight cents an hour, which isn't a ton of money, but it does tend to add up. Serverless, this is if you have a lot of data that you're reading but not writing because you see it says 10 cents per 1 million reads. I suspect they do charge you more for writing data though. We're going to go with M0, which is the free tier for learning and exploring MongoDB. Totally, this is the perfect one, totally fine for your test projects, hobby projects, anything like that. Storage, 512 megabytes, not a lot, but if you're going over 512 megabytes, you probably actually have some serious usage of your app, and then you might want to move to something else. RAM and vCPU shared, that means these are not dedicated servers, so they're a little slower, also totally fine for a test application. Um, if you want to set the provider, you can. I'm just going to leave it alone. You can change your name if you want. I'm just going to leave it as cluster zero because it doesn't really matter that much. And create. All right, username and password. Username is gonna be in the connection string. Remember the password. So I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna create a new text file here. And I'm just gonna paste that in there because I'm gonna need to hold on to this. This is important. If you get forget your password, then um, you're gonna have to, I mean, it's not the hugest deal. You have to go back and edit it, but it's still a thing. Where would you like to connect from? Local environment, 
is what I'm going to use. Cloud environment is it's it's a little little different, so just leave it as local. Now here's here's another important part. Heroku does not generally give us a static IP address. If you want to connect Atlas into Heroku, you have to tell it what IP address Heroku is connecting from. Add an IP address. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put the following IP address. 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. This is the entire internet. This basically opens up your cluster to the whole internet. Now, this isn't the best decision security wise. And if you're actually doing a real production environment for a project, I would recommend that you get a static IP or a static IP block from Heroku. Or um, there's actually a couple other providers that give you static IPs as well and use that instead. However, this is a test thing. So I want to spend as little money as possible. And also it's a test account. I don't really care if someone accesses this data than when they're not supposed to. So I'm just going to open it up to everywhere. Click add entry. Um, then let's see, why can't I? Oh, I have to click create. Okay, so I have to click create user. I missed that. So make sure you click that so it shows up here. I saved my password. You can see it's gone. If you want to get your password, you need to get back and click edit. And then just change the password. Now this finish and close. You notice finish and close did not light up until I'd done the user step. So uh, that's kind of nice of them. Finish and close. We're going to go to overview. All right. It In the background, it already loaded and configured. If it hasn't hadn't set up, then you'd probably see something here telling you it's setting up. So I'm going to say connect and connect your application. So there's a couple of options here. Compass, Shell, MongoDB, VS Code, Atlas SQL. We're going to say drivers because MongoDB native drivers, for example, Node.js. Mongoose counts as a driver. So we'll click this. Node.js version 5.5 or later because you're probably using version 18 at least by this point. They give you some stuff. Here's how to install, but here's the big one we want. Here's the connection string. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. You notice how the password is not filled out, but everything else is. So I'm going to go here to VS Code, and I'm going to paste this in here. And I'm going to take my password and I'm going to replace, including the brackets here. Whenever you see something like this with the less than greater than, it usually means you want to replace whatever's inside and the less than greater than. So here's my full connection string that I want to use. You might be saying, oh, but you're putting your password in the video. I'm going to delete this cluster as soon as I finish recording this video. So this is not going to be useful. Now I have this. Now I'm going to go to Heroku. Actually, let me pop this into the other one. Heroku, create a new app. Call this. Oops. Test Mongo app. Just so I know what it's called. Create that app. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings, reveal config vars. Now let me pop back to my connection. Copy this just so I make sure it's it matches. Paste that in there. I'm going to go here. Copy my field here. Paste that in here. Set up. So I'm going to come over here to deploy. And I'm going to grab my Git remote here. Git in it to create the repository. And I'm going to set it up. Now, here's an important step. You need to do a commit. Otherwise, Heroku gets a little confused. I also don't want my node modules in here because that can also confuse Heroku. Um, the node modules oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, sometimes they are compiled specifically for your system. My system is a Mac. Heroku runs on Linux. So any binaries compiled for the Mac won't work. So if you get weird issues um, with things like bcrypt, for instance, not loading, it might be because you've pushed your node modules. So git ignore node modules. There we go. Now I go in here. I'm going to add all of these. And I'm going to say first commit. And you could publish from here. Um, I'm just going to say bit 
push Heroku main. Okay, it goes through, starts building. Let's watch this for a minute, make sure it goes. Installing dependencies. Build succeeded. Now, as that happens, I'm going to go over here to the logs just so I can kind of see what's going on there. Because I want to keep those. Okay, so it's launching now. Now look here. And the fact that this shows means that there was a successful connection. App listening. How do I know that? If I go into server... Oops, this is too big. I can't listen on the app unless the database is open. So the very fact that this worked means that it made a successful connection. So I'll open this up. Add some names. Okay, there we go. And if I reload, it loads that name. It's a little slow. Um, and that's kind of to be expected with a, a Eco Heroku Dino and um, a free Atlas. But that's basically it. That's basically what you want to do. Um, so to reiterate, make sure you have your MongoDB URI, or you can call it something else, is just what I happen to call it, as long as it matches in when you're doing your connection string. Then inside here, oops, create your org, create your project, and then create your database cluster. So you can see I have a cluster here now. When you have your cluster, make sure you're setting 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 as the IP allow, because that will open it up to any IP address Heroku will have. Once you get all that set up, also make sure you create your user, make sure you remember the password. Click connect, click drivers. Here's your connection string that you have here. You could also view full code example, but this is actually using MongoDB, not Mongoose. Um, so that's not gonna work completely for us. And then replace password with the password. This is why you need to remember your password. Once you get to Heroku, make sure you set that configuration variable. And then you should be good to go. Hopefully this is helpful for you all. If it was, we'd appreciate if you give us a like. It really helps us out. I'll see you all next time.